Can I have your invited attention? How is everybody this evening? Don't you know you are warriors? Do you know your identity? Do you know who you are? Or are you believing the lie that is speaking to you? Because just because you're in the program or in a ministry and you, you're, you're doing things routine, routinely over and over again, don't you know the routine is to bring you into discipline? To bring you to what you practice is what you become. And nine months is, or two years is hardly nothing. Some of y'all did time that quick and came out the same way. It takes perseverance. It takes a lot of heartache. You know, I've been here just for a little minute. It hasn't been that long. Not in God's eyes. But I'm going to tell you something. I've been through a lot of stuff that you have not seen. Because you, just because you haven't seen the things I went through, I went through the same things y'all probably went through too because I came through the same steps that you had to go through. I had to come through the nine months program. I had to do the aftercare. I had to learn how to be responsible with my own self so I would be, keep myself together with the Lord, to, to, to trust the Lord that he can maintain me. Then I had to learn to, then the Lord pushed me out. I didn't ask for it. But the Lord pushed me out there to be accountable for other people. Even through my struggles and my shortcomings, I still had to be accountable to take care of others. So don't think that because everything is just a routine and it's all over again and that. Uh, yeah, I went through the teachings and everything else too. But I'm going to tell you something. The worship kept me. Prayer kept me. When I was taught early to get myself dressed up and get prepared for battle each day, I did it. Even when my shortcomings came, I still was doing it. Even when I was out there and fell away, I still had that tongue kept on going. Yet, that probably got me back to where I needed to be at because I was disciplined. I was disciplined to practice who I was to become. This is a long journey. This journey is not short. Everything that we go through today it's something that you might need for tomorrow. Because somebody out there that you may cross by might need your information. Might need some wisdom that God's planted in you to speak. Or something. And a lot of times, it's not what you speak. It's what you do. Because they're watching. Sinners are watching to see if you're a Christian or you're just like the other Christians that are out there. That say they're Christian, but they still run in the world. They're looking for somebody that's genuine and real. When they're at home or they're not at home, are you still the same person? Are you still still have the like, same thought pattern? Are you or are you too busy in a rush to get things done. The Lord says patience. Have patience. Because sometimes you get in a rush, you might be before God. And, and God's going to have to slow you down. Because God is God of order and kind. You know, he waited for us. How many times were we out there calling the name of Jesus and we didn't think he'd never come? Then, that, then one day, the Holy Spirit just sitting there waiting, just waiting, just waiting and looking at the Father. Is it time yet? No, not yet. Is it time yet? No, not yet. You know, it says the divine time is when he came. The divine time, the time that and everybody else thought that it was all over for your life. Is it time yet, Daddy? No. Now, boom! 
instantly the Holy Spirit comes. Instantly. Now it's up to you to fight. Now it's your time. It's the time that you have now is to fight to keep it. To keep yourself so that the enemy cannot steal it or take away or manipulate you to give it away. Because he's good at that. The title of your teaching today is let me find it first. <laughs> Get dressed. Get dressed. Everybody in this place need to get dressed. Especially the babies. Um, and, and then at times, it could be us too, because there's times when we can get in a work habit so busy and running and everything that we forget to get dressed. You might get your physical f clothes on and getting dressed and, and running out the door, but you're getting spiritually dressed, getting yourself dressed up for battle because there's a battle going on, and the battle is every second of the day because the enemy is always fighting you to resist you because he knows that if you know your true identity, it's going to be harder for him to take your identity away. Amen? Everybody okay? Amen. I'm glad everybody's woke now. <laughs> Let's go to Romans 13, verse 9. For the commandments... You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment, are all summed up in the saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does not harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is a fulfillment of the law. And do this knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of a sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we were first believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in reverie or drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife or in envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. So you know you got to get yourself armored up. But the first thing you have to do is put your priestly garments on. And Pastor Speak speaks about putting the priestly garments on first so that it can protect your armor. So when you put your armor on, then you can be ready for battle. But I have here, Satan will come against us to break covenant. That's his main thing that Satan wants to do is for you to break covenant. So if you break covenant, then he has full access to have you. He, has, he comes to break covenant with God. We must fight to dress up with the full armor of God for battle. Make no place for the devil. Make no place. I know that, you know, sometimes we think that it's hard because we, in our feeble minds, we think that, man, that's impossible. This person did this, this person did that to me. It's impossible for me to forgive them for this and yada, yada. And even in, and even in relationships, it happens because sometimes the person you're close to is the person that could hurt you the most. You know that. It could be your mother. It could be your father. It could be a cousin. Oh, yeah, cousins, man. Forget about it. <laughs> your siblings. It could be even your brother and sister in Christ. They can hurt you. It happens because a lot of times you don't even know that the person that you might be speaking something to that person, 
and you don't know what they're dealing with, and Satan's attacking them about a situation, but you don't even know about it. But Satan can use you to put a, a little thorn into it without you even knowing it. You could be coarse jesting and putting a jab into it, and that person already feels this low because they've been bombarded, been bombarded, and they're not really fighting because still they're so busy listening to the voice, the voice that's speaking to them, and not able to rise up and know their identity and say, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus, and not using the words that's supposed to be given to you. Amen? Okay, let's move to Second Corinthians 10, verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down what? And what's a stronghold? So when you're going through stuff and you, the enemy's beating you up, that's a stronghold. You should know that. We've been taught that many, many times, and we still don't pick up the tools to use it. We don't bind up that stronghold that's speaking lies. to Hey, sometimes we know it's a lie. And still believe it. Because we heard it so much. How many times, we don't have to raise your hands up. How many times you was raised up and somebody said, you ain't going to amount to nothing. You ain't jack. Well, you know, the other words that came with that. But you believed it. And so when you come to a place where you mess up something, and the words come right back. And they're speaking right over into your thoughts. Man, I know I should... It happened to me today. I did a mistake. And I started to down myself because I made the mistake. I said, uh-uh. I'm buying that thought up. I'm going to learn from that mistake. Amen? I'm going to learn from that. Because mistakes are there for you to learn. But if you keep on doing it, it becomes a habit. Amen? Then you have to break the habit. And then you have the authority of your tongue to break that habit. That's consistently happening into your life. Amen? So casting down arguments. So there's the argument right there. We're arguing within that realm to get ourselves free. And, and every high thing that exalts itself against the what? The knowledge of God. Because the knowledge of God said we can do all things. Can't, didn't it say that? Amen? And it says bringing every thought into what? Captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience and being ready to punish all disobedience when our obedience is fulfilled. Everything we do will be resistance. Because when you walk in the, in the word of when you walk in the will of God, the enemy is not going to make it easy. I watch around here when we have things to do and we and little simple things. Things that you, you know could be done in five minutes. It takes about an hour and a half. <laughs> because some resistance comes and you got to fight to get it. And if something breaks and you got to run and get it. Now those that have been around, they understand when you walk work around pastor and you're working and something happens and then we got to do something else and we got to figure it and then you have to wait on the Lord to show him how to do it another way. Because there's always resistance when you're doing the will of God. When you're, when you're a child of God. And that the resistance is for you to give up. To give up and say, I quit. I can't do this no more. That's what the resistance wants to do, to give up hope. Amen? In the spirit, we must walk in the light to overcome darkness. And, other, and others and within ourselves. So when you see other people going that are having situations and problems, you're supposed to lift them up. That, that's what we're supposed to do. You're supposed to lift them up and, tell, and show them that, you know, why don't you bind, bind that spirit up? We ain't supposed to hold their hand, but let them remind them. Hey, you ain't got to be there. Get out that mud. Bind that spirit up. You got to do the work. I mean, we can help you, but... How about when you're around a whole bunch of sinners and you can't, and you're all by yourself? What you gonna do then? 
You're going to have to discipline yourself to know how to fight in the mud. Because the world is not going to help you. They'll talk about you, though. Yeah, you say you're a Christian, huh? Yeah, I see you. <laughs> Ain't the world know, don't the world know what a Christian is supposed to look like? <laughs> don't they always tell you, yeah, you're supposed to be a Christian. <laughs> you're supposed to be the opposite of what I think. Hey, y'all didn't catch that. You're supposed to be the opposite of what they think. Even though it sounds good, don't mean that it came from heaven. Amen? Overcome worldly systems. Let me go back. and We must walk in the light to overcome darkness in others and within ourselves. Overcoming the worldly system that was established to bring Satan's power of delusions. And doing this, allowing the power of the Holy Spirit to move within us. So we, we cancel out the spirit of delusion. And allow the Holy Spirit to come in that's within us to guide us and strengthen us through how we're supposed to see things and how we're supposed to do things. Amen? Everybody okay? Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 5. I learned that there's times when something can come up and you have to leave immediately. You know, something happened. That happens to me a, a lot back in the day when I was in the discipleship house, running the disciples' house and everything. There was something happening and I have to get up and it, like a water break or something that happens and you got to instantly get up. What you have to do then is take your prayer, prayer, prayer closet with you. I mean, you can take it and speak in tongues and get yourself in order and t until the time when you can get to yourself and get yourself in time with the Lord, you know, and, and find that time to get with him. But take your prayer closet. You got the gifts with you. That's the perfect will of God. Speak that thing. That thing does wonders, man. It does wonders. If you don't believe it, then don't do it. But if you believe it, do it. Like Paul says, I speak more tongues than you do. Man, he, he must have been a tongue-speaking dude, man. Hey, how you doing, Paul? <laughs> hey, man, I see what you're doing. Because <laughs> God gave him a lot of prophecy, a lot of scriptures that came in the New Testament came from Paul. Because he spoke a lot of tongues, got a lot of revelation. Stuff that is still manifesting today. That God spoke to him because he dug in deep. And he got that full armor on and he got himself prepared. And he was in some battles. We argue about and, and complain about these little battles. Imagine being in, in dung up to your, your thing up, up to here. And you, and you shout to people say, count all joy. Being in prison, knowing that you're going to get killed. And you're still going to your journey to death. Real death. Knowing that they're going to kill you. But he's going to fulfill his assignment. To fulfill the promises of God, knowing that his position in heaven is greater than what he sees of his position on earth. Amen? 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 5. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do. And when he's talking about sleep, that means not being asleep in the spirit realm, being blinded, uh, walking in uh, a deaf and dumb spirit, but being awake, being able to hear God speak to you and be able to move when he's speaking. Amen? Do what it says, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, put on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. Only walking in the Spirit of God, you can be sober and drunk at the same time. <laughs> you can be drunk in the Spirit 
and still be sober to take the instructions to go forth. Sometimes I see pastor so drunk, he, I don't know, sometimes he can't even move. He'd be up there giggling and can't even function, can't even talk. <laughs> but he's sober. <laughs> and being and being alert. Because you gotta be watchful, because the enemy is always looking for a loophole to get in. Always. Being disciplined to overcome the schemes of the enemy. So by being disciplined, you'll be able to overcome. Even if you gotta understand something. The enemy doesn't always come with big things towards you. He comes very subtle. He comes where you don't even feel him. You don't even feel him. He just comes so subtle. And that's his scheme. That's how he works. He comes where you're not supposed to feel him because he's deceptive. So if you, if, you, if you can feel him, you know he's there. You're like, oh, there's times when you can go to some places and the back of your hair stands up and you know there's, there's evil there. You say, man, I, got, I can't go here. Even in the world, when I was in the world, I will go to places and, and the back of my hair comes up and I was like, man, it ain't safe over here. We got to get out of here. I, I feel something over here. But there's many times that he's so subtle that he's drawing stuff out you that you don't even know because you're touching the grief with what he's speaking. And because he only got, he only speaks to you. So as you touch and agree with him and your mindset, he's already got your thoughts. And if he got your thoughts, he's going to dilute your heart, bring your heart into a place, and slowly it's going to be like cement and get stony. Amen? Let's go to Ephesians 6. And when that happens, and when you feel that, you, you cry out and repent. That's one of the things that you do in your prayer closet. I hope everybody do that every morning. Repent. Repent. Repent, for the kingdom of God is where? At hand. Repent. Even, and then throughout the day, I hope you're repenting. Because there's a lot of times I have to repent after I repent it. <laughs> trying to cast them thoughts out. Repent, repent. Oh, that flesh. That flesh can get you in trouble. Ephesians 6, verse 10. It says, Finally, my brothers, be strong in the Lord and the power of, and the power of his might. So we can't be in the power of ourselves and think that we can do it on our own strength. Because sometimes we can be confident with our own gifts and keep the Lord out of them. But we, he wants to be a, a part of everything that we do. Because he don't want us to become the idol. And he, was, he wants to be the one that's involved in doing the things with you. So he can guide you and strengthen you. It says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles, that means the trickery of the devil, because he's so common, cunning that he's deceitful. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand and the evil day. You know what evil days are? Evil days are, we're in it today, but I, I look at evil days also in the time when things just start going crazy in your life. And you didn't do nothing wrong. It's just God's allowing crazy stuff to happen within your life. Just like Job. When Job was going through those times, there was like evil days to him. There were real evil days because Satan was coming against, coming after him, trying to, what? Take away his covenant with God. And God was testing him because he knew already that Job was going to fulfill 
and overcome. But now he wants you to see the same thing. So when things start going with something going on in the house and it's going all crazy and it seems like everything's erupted, those are evil times for you. Very evil because you're in the right then and the present of now. Forget about what you did yesterday and forget about what happened, happens tomorrow. Things happen now. And sometimes it could be the smallest thing. Simple. Like that last screw that you put in to, to appliances or something. Isn't that last screw always a mess up? <laughs> it's like they don't line the thing up right and you got to push and pull and everybody. Simple thing. Y'all start understanding that tomorrow. <laughs> you will be tested. We all will. It says, in the it says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil days and have it done all to what? Stand. Stand, therefore, having girded up your waist with truth. That means put on the belt, the, the, uh, the belt of truth. You know what the belt of truth does? It protects your loins from, from the things that you don't need to be touching. But also the belt of truth can also, it's like it keeps it together. But when you buckle it in, it keeps everything together. It keeps it so it don't, your pants don't fall down or everything else. Amen? It keeps it together. Amen? Having put on the breastplate of righteousness, that is to protect your heart. Because God says that those who have a pure heart sees God. So if you don't have a pure heart, you can't see God. So the put on the breastplate of righteousness, it helps you to see God, to keep yourself purified and clean and holy. And you can hear him. And he can speak in that heart too. You know that. Yeah, he can speak in your heart. He can speak. The devil can't speak in your heart. God does. When you hear God speaking and your heart speaks to you, that's God speaking. The devil can't do that. He only speaks here. God speaks in your heart. And having shot your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, that means you're supposed to carry the gospel of good news everywhere we go. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which we will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. Now, that shield of faith is not only just for you. That shield of faith is also to help protect your brothers and sisters. Because faith is not, the shield of faith is not only, now, I'm going to tell you something. The new generation, new age, believes in faith, but they believe in faith and faith. They believe that they have faith in, I, I know I got faith I can get in my car and go somewhere. I have faith I can do this. I got faith in doing that. But this is talking about having faith in God, because God is your faith. He's your protector. He's your shield. He comes in to be the shield for you and your provider to protect you from the wiles of the enemy and, and keep your faith to be established. And so, because God gives you a little measure of faith, but he keeps that faith so that he's the one that's doing it for you, and you're dependent on him, not yourself. Amen? I ain't got no amens on that. Y'all don't believe that, huh? Well, you better believe in that, that, that he's your shield of faith. Don't have your own faith. And you'll be in trouble. I'll be looking at you going down the street. Where you going? Praying always in, in the supplication of the Spirit. Being watchful to the end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. See, for all the saints. So use that tongue. That thing has some power. That thing, it can do some changes. That thing brings, let me stop saying things. The Holy Spirit brings revelations. He brings you dreams. He brings you sight. He brings you comfort within yourself. And he helps you pray for others. You know, a lot of times people don't understand, as you pray for others, your prayers could be answered. You know that, right? You get caught up praying for yourself all the time, and we call up on 
the eye surgery and looking always in the mirror, you're only going to see yourself. So sometimes you need to turn that move around and start praying for other people. Pray for other people. Pray for your campus. Pray for every, everything. Not just in the corporate prayer, but in your, in your prayer closet. Because the Lord says that when you pray secretly, he rewards you openly. So a lot of times, when you go in your prayer closet, you pray secretly in your, in your own self and nobody knows about it. That's what God loves the most because he knows that he can reward you openly and you can see the blessings that's going on. And other people also. A lot of times they might think it's them, but somebody else is praying for them to bring the achievement for them. If we are not armed, we will be tricked. We are first attackers. That's what we are. That's the first thing you should be doing. The first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is say, good morning, Father, good morning, Jesus, good morning, Holy Spirit. I give him all recognition. So I let him know that he is my supreme being. I'm saying good morning to you. God, I need to let you know. Thank you for waking me up. And I might feel a little plain, but thank you for waking me up. <laughs> Our tongues yields to the Holy Spirit to speak the cause and the purpose of his will and help us to have the character of Christ. And that's what it builds up, because now it's bringing you to, for you got to understand something. Jesus had the full armor of God on him every day. Every day he was out there, he was out there what? To defeat the enemy and to help others and to heal and bring revelation. So all we're doing is doing the same thing as Jesus was doing. Getting ourselves equipped for battle. You know, he, he went to the Father secretly and leave the disciples and everybody else behind so he'd get one-on-one -on -one with his Father. So they can have a one-on-one -on -one relationship without all the noise. Because noise distracts you. It'll take your thoughts away. Amen? 2 Corinthians 6, verse 4. But in all things, we commend ourselves as ministers of God and much patience and tribulations and need and distress by purity, by knowledge, by long-suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by sincere love, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold, we live, as chastened and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet uh, always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. This is where your character of Christ will show in everything you do it unto the Lord. This is where your character will show. Right there. Let's go to 1 Samuel 17. We have a little lad here named David. He was a, a God after God's own heart. But he had to be disciplined before he, came, before he came against this giant. He had to know who he was before he got there. God challenged him to, to take care of the sheep. Just as you're told him right now, learning how to take care of sheep. Because didn't he tell, tell us that we are sheep? So we are, we are supposed to be taking care of each other. And, and the only way we do that is getting ourselves equipped each day for battle for ourselves and for others. 
And David was getting in battle when he had to kill that lion and the bear to protect the sheep. He was learning how to fight. He was learning how to, he was a worshiper too. So he knew how to worship and he knew how to seek the Lord. Every day, I guarantee you, David was always seeking the Lord for instruction. Even when he fell, he was out of place because that one day he probably got up out of bed and forgot who, where he was at. And the enemy was waiting for him. Amen? Because you got to understand, the enemy is always waiting. He's always looking. He's waiting for the opportunity so that he can attack. And because he knows that we are damaging his kingdom. And he don't like that. 1 Samuel 17, 41. It says here, So the Philistine came and began drawing near to David, and the man who bore the shield went before him. And when the Philistines looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and good-looking. So the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with stick? And the Philistine cr cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give you your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of Israel, whom you have defiled. So Samuel, in the beginning, he was defiling God. And that upset him because he was in love with God. With with, uh, with God. He was in love with him. He, he was, he seen him as no other. So when Goliath cussed God and he spoke to him like this, Saul was wanted to give him his armor. David couldn't fit his armor. It's just like me trying to put on a hockey suit playing football. It don't work. It don't go together. So David used what God equipped him with. He equipped him with the slingshot because David used that slingshot in the field to protect the sheep. And he gathered five stones because Goliath had brothers. So he had one for Goliath and he had the other four because he was waiting. So David said, I got something that no man ever seen. I got a guided missile. The first guided missile that ever was created. <laughs> Because you got to understand, he had a helmet on that was protecting his head also. And he had it all covered. And that stone had a direct assignment right to the specific place to get to Goliath. And God guided it. He knew that God would guide that because he had faith, knowing that he was his provider and he was his protector. Amen? This is how we're supposed to attack. The devil, when he speaks within our thoughts or our desires that is not of God, we bind them and cast them out in the name of Jesus. So when our thoughts get bombarded with things that is not of God, I bind that up in the name of Jesus. It don't go the first time. You keep on binding it. You keep on binding it. I bind that up in the name of Jesus. I bind that because now it's not a physical battle. It's spiritual. It's an unseen thing. So when them thoughts comes, you bind them up. Bind them up and cast them down. Send them back to the sender. Or send them to the pit. Amen? Let's go to Hebrews 4, verse 11. Let us therefore be diligent to enter the rest lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. For the words of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of soul and spirit and, and of joint and marrow, and the discerning of the thought and the intent of the, the heart. 13. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must 
give account. So we have to we have to give an account for those things that ponders in our thought. So he knows that we are equipped. We are taught every week how to fight. And still we stumble. But he knows that we're going to stumble. But he wants to see us be consistent of using our weapons. Using that helmet of salvation that protects the wiles of the enemy, that's the thought pattern that comes into our thoughts so that we can bind those things up with this because we have the power. I'm not even going to go to it, but, but Proverbs 18.21 says, life and death is where? In the power of the tongue. Life and death. So you have the power to speak life for your brothers and sisters and speak death to the enemy. Amen? You have the power to do that. Let's go. Last scripture is Psalm 34, verse 4. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and he delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant. And their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard, heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. So, as you have the full armor of God on, you also got angels. So you're not in this battle alone. You got, you got an army behind you that you can't see, but they're there. When you're in position, they work, they work for you. The battle of the unseen and even the seen that you can't see, that you don't even know. There's a lot of things that we have been rescued from that we don't even know of. We don't even know of because the Lord didn't allow us to see it. But he blocked it. He blocked it. The devil tries to tell us the Lord can't rescue you. You know that. We have the angels on our behalf. We must be reverenced unto God, being naked before him every day. We must behead the serpent and Goliath. So get dressed. So get dressed. Amen? Just get dressed. Don't stop getting dressed. I don't care how long you say, I'm a, I'm a graduate. Get dressed more. So I'm going to tell you something. The, the longer you're in this battle, every level is another devil. And they get bigger. They get bigger. The demons that I'm fighting ain't the demons that pastor's fighting. The demons I'm fighting ain't the demons you're fighting. The demons you're probably fighting in the houses, I already fought those. Yeah, but they, but they straggle along and come with the bigger ones too sometimes. They try to bring back familiar spirits and bring uh, thoughts back into, try to bring you back to the old man. So you got to bind all that stuff up and fight. Use your weapons. Use your tools. You have them. Don't let them get rusty. Don't come out there and, and pull your, your sword out and all you got is a handle. Make sure you got it sharp like a two-edged sword. Cut and devour. So when it goes in, it pulls something out. Amen? Father, we come together right now. We thank you, Lord, for your word. Lord, I ask that as we go about our day tomorrow, Lord, that we are tonight that we will we remember the structure who we are and what you have called us to be that we may carry on with our, what we are equipped on and not walking with a, a helmet that is twisted and what, moving backwards but we have it fitted right the way that you dress us Lord that we allow you to dress us that we can come apart of the things that the enemy has plot and planned against us 
Now, Father, I ask you, protect each and every one as they leave. Let them have dreams and visions, and let them have a peaceful wake up in the morning, and let them be dressed in the morning, Lord, and be prepared for battle for your glory and your glory alone. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.